morning, everyone. Hello. I think we've got a few people still jumping on as it's nine o'clock. Um, I can see, I can hear more people jumping in. Um, but I will just kick off because um, we've got a really good demo to go through today. Um, but thanks for all for joining. Um, today's Higher Education Hub will be exploring the importance of personalised marketing and how that can be used to attract students to your university and the technology that sits behind it that can help you do this. Um, just a bit of uh, an introduction before we get into the demonstration by Martin. Um, if you've got any questions throughout, I'll keep an eye on the chat. Um, so please don't hesitate to pop anything in that you've got in there. We can jump in and answer any that you've got throughout. Um, but we will have a bit of a Q&A at the end as well for anyone that does want to kind of have a bit more of a discussion afterwards. Um, so a little bit of background about the Higher Education Hub. So our HE Hub is essentially an online forum that we hold um, every other month uh, to bring together our peers in the higher education sector and share some of that strategic technology thinking and what we're seeing in the market. Um, and essentially, we just want to bring together like-minded people to have some discussions and hopefully create a good community off the back of it. We're always keen to understand as well if there's anything else that that you guys want to see us explore. So if there's anything of interest that you think would be really helpful to have on one of these sessions, please let me know um, and then we can bring it into one of the future ones. Um, a little bit of background for anyone that might be new to Crimson. Um, so our mission statement really is to unite people processes and technology to solve your toughest business challenges and we really look to do this through using iterative and agile techniques that help you deploy faster um, which then helps you see that value quicker for your users improve that user adoption but then also drives the benefits that often you call out as part of your business case we do have some great partnerships, so we're working with some great companies, a few of which are on the screen here. Um, I know we've got a couple of uh, people that we're working with potentially joining today, so um, hopefully you can spot yourself, or if not, that <laughs> more will be added. Um, but we've been doing some really great work across the sector, um, and we're really excited to really bring in that experience and that expertise that we have from these discussions into anyone new, but also to engage in new conversations with you guys. Um, we do partner with both Microsoft and also with BT, so can kind of draw on the expertise at those two companies as well as part of this. So at Crimson, um, we are part of the wider Nash Square, which used to be Harvey Nash. Um, so we do have a consult uh, resourcing arm um that works alongside our IT consultancy team so with practices across the Microsoft stack so from you know your Azure your data um all the way through to Dynamics 365 which is probably what we'll, we'll be focusing mostly on today um but if there's any interest across those other areas let, let us know and we can we can kind of catch up with you about them we do also have a managed services area so um that sits within our teams to help support you longer term um, but we are a Microsoft Gold partner, as I mentioned before, so we have some really great expertise across that area to try and bring those discussions in into them. A um, little bit about us, so um, I am Madeline Masters, so I work as an account manager at Crimson. Um, I've been with the company just shy of two years, so Martin and I actually joined at a similar time, um, but work I work predominantly within the higher education sector. So work with some of the customers that were on that previous slide but also work with the wider team to to understand where else we can be bringing in in different parts of parts of the business which is where martin then fits in so martin i don't know if you're okay to do a little bit of a an introduction as well yeah good good morning everybody yeah martin gallagher i'm one of the solution consultants within our consultancy team um been working with dynamics for ooh, quite a few years now um, and as Madeline said, I, I joined um, Crimson around the same time as, as her. So and it's good to meet you all. Thanks, Martin. So that was a little bit about us and what we do, um, but on to the interesting stuff now, probably. Um, so today I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we are looking at exploring how you can attract students through personalised marketing. 
and how that can improve that experience and that engagement across the whole application process. Um, just a couple of statistics to set the scene really first um so these are from the the HESA data um but in the previous academic year so 2020 2021 633,745 students started their university degree and that's across 280 higher education institutions so Oh, sorry. So that's a, a lot of people. Um, so a really huge market, but also means that there's a lot of competition there. And that means that the attraction process and how you engage with those prospective students and also that kind of first interaction is actually really important all the way through from them submitting that application. So it can be a huge factor in how they make their, their decision of which university that they're, they're going to attend. We'll get into the demo in a little bit to kind of talk about actually how does the technology sit behind that but I think what we wanted to do really quickly was just to pause here and see if anyone wanted to add anything into the chat or come off mute if you're comfortable to do so just around what you see as a really key differentiating factor in how you can attract the best students or you know what what are the areas that that you think drive that engagement from your students when they're going through that that initial attraction all the way to to the application process. So give a minute to see if anything pops into the chat. Yeah. Coming in. I suppose when we when we were thinking about it before we come in and from from some of the conversations that we've had um what we really can see sometimes is around that personalised messaging. So, for example, if a student has uh, submitted their application and they've said they're really interested in a specific sport, how do you give them a personalised messaging about you know, outside of just your academic part of it? What do you do around sports, art, um, music, etc., to help them understand about, you know, there's different parts of the university that can make them exceed in success in in that area so a couple of things like that but also whether it's a call to action so um i know some universities look at engaging some of their existing students with prospective students so getting that conversation going and really fielding that that discussion before they even get through to the application process so a couple of things there and i know martin's going to go into a a few of those kind of areas and how the technology can help you do that but I think the really key thing in all of this is that students want to feel valued by the university so keeping that personalization up throughout that time and then also kind of attracting them to you know the different parts of a university and how they can get engaged so I will now hand over to Martin, who will do the demo. Um, like I said, if there's anything throughout, uh, please let me know uh, in the chat and I'll keep an eye on that. Um, but Martin, I'll hand over to you now. OK, thanks, Madeline. Um, right, let me just share my screen. Um, I'm going to leave my camera off because I was having a few internet issues this morning, so I don't want to I don't want to cause any problems with this. So uh, yeah, so as Madeline was saying, what what we wanted to do in this demo was just show you uh, some of the features and capabilities of um, Dynamics 365 marketing that can help you as a as a marketer um, be able to uh, improve your kind of your attraction rates through uh, personalization and and obviously I'm going to throw a few other sort of features in 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 there as well just to kind of help you so uh, for those of you that have not seen dynamics marketing before um, this is this is what it looks like and the great thing about this is that if you're familiar with any of the other uh, dynamics 365 um, model driven apps or power apps however you want to refer to them um, then the great thing about this is that it's going to be very similar to you. Um, so let's start our kind of um, investigation of what of what we've got um, with uh, with some collateral. So uh, so what I've started doing here is um, and all of this is very much a, a work in progress because what I want to do is I want to show you how some of these things have been have been built just to give you an idea of 
just how easy it is with uh, with Dynamics 365 marketing to build these things out. So what I've actually started doing is I've started building out an email here that we're going to be uh, sending to our uh, our contacts um, and what I'm doing is basing this on contacts that have maybe expressed an interest in studying engineering um, or have maybe submitted an inquiry or you know have contacted the university in some way with regard to uh, studying engineering so I'm just going to open up the email record here uh, and first of all, I am going to point out I'm I'm not a design expert, not by any means. So this is my attempt at, at building a, an email. But the key thing here is to show you, you know, the features and 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 not you know not worry too much about uh, how good I am at creating uh, email collateral. So um, so you can see I've got I've got the email open here. Um, so I just want to pull out a few things for you. So so the first thing is, is that let's just work top to bottom with this email and then and then what I'll do is I'll kind of review some of the other things a bit later on. Um, so you can see here in the subject line, um, the first thing we've got is we've got some personalization right in the subject line here. So uh, so if I click on the subject line, um, then what you can see here is um, that I've got some personalization right in here. And the way that I would achieve that is by just using this personalization button here. So I've just created my normal subject line for the email and then obviously just uh, put the cursor where I want it and then basically click on the personalization button. And what that effectively will do is it will give me um, a list of uh, the fields that I can actually choose from. And you can see here, um, it's actually showing that I've picked the um, the first the first name from from the contact record. So I'll just cancel out of that. So that's really easy to do. That's just literally clicking and and choosing from some options. And um, the other thing that I wanted to show you in here as well, because I think sometimes this is a feature that we overlook um, and it can be really powerful. And that's the preview text. So if you're not sure what the preview text is, um, try and visualize your emails when they come into Outlook. And very often you'll see the subject line of the email, but depending on how you've got your Outlook configured, it might actually show you what looks to be like the first few lines of the email that's the preview text so so what you can do in there is you can you can actually put some preview text in there and that's great for um you know for the recipients of the email because they they're actually getting some idea of what the content of this email is relating to without actually having to open the email and that's particularly relevant today where you know, lots of people are actually afraid to open emails because there's so much scamming and, and spamming that goes on these days. So putting something in the preview text is actually really quite useful. So that's the first bit um, that I just wanted to show you. Now we carry on the personalization down here um, because what you'll see is that I've got uh, some personalization on here as well. So just on, on the, the deal line here, uh, you can see again I've got the personalization here now to do this one we've got the personalization button up here um, so basically again place the cursor where you want it hit the personalization and then it pops up with a list of um, fields that you can choose from and you can see that it's actually showing me which fields I've already used in this email so you can see uh, I've already used the first name I've already used the city notice the interface is slightly different between the subject line and the body of the email but but that's just the way Microsoft have designed it so that's the personalization coming in there I'm going to come back to personalization a little bit uh, later on so the other thing that I think is always quite useful is um, is putting links in your emails so um, because again that can help drive uh, the students to your other resources um, where they could also have a personalized experience like your uh, your various portals, your various websites. So so embedding links into the emails themselves and you can see I've I've done that here very easily. Um, so you can see this one's gone blue, so it's already um, a, a link. But basically all you would have to do is select the text that you're interested in and then you've got this link button up here which then lets you um, bring out the um, 
uh, the the link title where you can you can basically confirm the title is OK, um, but I wanted to show you this. So what you get with Dynamics Marketing is that it doesn't just have to be a URL. So it, it could be, for example, an event. Um, it can even be teams. So what's really great is that you can you can put like join in teams links into your emails a great, you know, great for, um, you know, nurturing, you know, your prospective students. Um, so you can you can put those straight into your emails and um, you can also have marketing pages and you can also have uh, calendar invites as well. So you can pop all of those straight into your into the body of your email from here. Um, I just used the URL uh, as an example and then obviously I would put the URL in here, um, but I'll show you an event one in a second. Um, and then the other thing I think is always useful to put into emails is uh, is a call to action. So you can see we've actually got we've got some um, some call to actions here. Um, so you can see I've got some some buttons um, and then basically this is basically going to, um, you know, call out that maybe they want to find out information about how to apply. So again, all you would do is basically add the button into uh, into the email and that's all done through uh, through these panels over here on the right hand side. So so you can see I've got the elements here and now all I need to do is just drag and drop these elements out. I, I can drag out the various different layouts. So you've noticed that, you know, I've got some bits of it where it's single column, some bits where it's two columns. So you drag out, you drag out the elements out of here, drop them onto the uh, onto the canvas where you want them in your uh, your email. And then once you select them, um, what you can then do is you can then go in and uh, add in the various different panels over here on, on the right hand side. What I wanted to do is show you this one. So with this one, um, this is a register for the open day. Um, so you can see over here when I click on it on the right hand side, again, I've got these options to say, you know, is it a URL? Is it an event? And in this case, it's actually uh, an, an event. Um, and with this one, it just gives me a look up to the event. So I haven't got to deal with any weird looking URLs or anything like that. It basically just says, well, tell me what the name of the event is and, and the Dynamics Marketing Platform will take care of it for you uh, without any hassle whatsoever. And we can, I can show you the, the actual event in a minute. So the other thing that I wanted to show you down here then was we've got some we've got some information in here about um you know sort of like our international women in in engineering day um and then we've got some uh, we've got some various case studies here and quotes from uh, from a lecturer and from a student um and then we've got this um applying as a mature student which is a bit further down and that's the one I want to come back to in a second um, but I just wanted to draw your attention to uh, personalization here again within the body of the email. Now this is often very subtle but can be very effective. So embedding personalization right into the body of the email itself uh, can be very, very powerful. I know certainly in our industry it, it works it works very, very well. And um, I suspect in higher education it would work e equally as well. So I wanted to come back to this applying as a mature student. Um, so what you can see here is I've got some text in here about applying as a mature student. Um, but what I'd quite like to do is higher up in the email, I've got an image. And it's this image here that I'm actually referring to. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but the the border of this one is a different color. So it's purple as opposed to blue when I ho hover over the other sections of the of the email. And that's because I've put some personalization here as well. So if I click on this one, what you'll see is I get this this button here. Um, it's going to say disable conditional content and that's because I've already set it up. But normally that would just say enable conditional content. And what this basically does is this allows me to have um, some default content, 
and then some variations. So having selected that part of the email, if I come over here to the right hand side, you'll see that I've got um, some variations here in this tab. So I can see what the default is. So I've got that here. And then if I scroll down, I can see my conditions and I can have more than one. So you can see what I've done in here is I've put in a condition to say if this is a mature student. So we've got a we've got a field on the contact record that indicates whether this student is a mature student or not. So if this student is a mature student, I actually want to see uh, a different image. So and if I click on that, you can see that I actually see the image changing in uh, in the actual email. So so I can actually test it out and see what it's actually going to look like. Obviously, one image is slightly bigger than the other, but um, obviously you'd you'd have a better job at um, finding out suitable images. But so that is building out the email um, and using the kind of the various features that you've got within um, within Dynamics 365 marketing to be able to build out uh, some emails. Um, and then obviously the content of the email, then obviously that's that's down to you as marketers, obviously to make that that content as um, as engaging as you possibly can. But certainly using features like personalization, call to actions, uh, this variation so you can have variations in your emails, lots of links so that you can um, direct the prospective students off to other resources, which can then obviously then also be personalized. Um, then you've got uh, you've got all that capability within Dynamics. Awesome. Yep. Sorry to jump in. We do have one question from Anna. Um, you know, at the bottom of that email you're talking about, uh, how many students have we attracted from X city, etc. Yeah. Um, the question is, can you tell that from CRM? Does that integrate from that, or is that a separate piece of work that you need to do? So, 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 so working out how many students we've attracted from. Um, yeah. From or does it tell you how many, how many you have attracted from a certain city, or is that yeah. kind of pulled in from the data of CRM? So if you if you capture um, if you capture where where the students have come from, um, which you know you you probably would do because at the point that they have um, you know applied to come to the university, then then you're going to hopefully capture some address details for them. Then that is part of that contact record within within Dynamics. So yeah, there's no reason why you can't then. Have you know have a have a report or a dashboard that basically will tell you how many students have registered for different courses, um, you know that originated from different locations, and that might be really pertinent with you know when it comes to things like your your, your foreign students, because obviously you 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 know you want to basically understand uh, you know how you're engaging with with foreign agents and and foreign students. So um, so yeah, there's no reason why you can't have uh, that information um, and then if you wanted to put that information actually into your email um, then then yeah as long as it's recorded somewhere in dynamics you know there's no reason why that statement there couldn't could not you know could say you know we have welcomed 32 students from Leicester or, or wherever it happens to be you know over the years yeah, so Paul's just added into that. Um, is that something that would be a content block? So potentially only inserting that that text if you've had, for example, 100 plus from a certain city. Um, yes, yeah, absolutely. So that could then be part of your variations. So so, you know, you, you, you pr it's the message is not going to be quite so strong if you're saying, you know, we've welcomed one student from Leicester as opposed to we've welcomed 100 students from Leicester. So you might want to you might want to have that as part of your variation to say only show that that statement or that block if if the number is above a certain a certain figure and obviously you would control what that threshold is. Yep. any others Madeline? No, that's it. Thank you. OK, brilliant. Um, right now, let's go up to this. Uh, let's go up to this call to action because here I had this register for um, the open day button, and I said that 
that took us off to um, an event. Now, universities spend, you know, huge amounts of their budget on organizing, you know, various events like like open days, for example, to try and attract um, potential new students to to come to their to their university. Um, and there's lots of ways that you can you can do that. Um, but one of the great features about Dynamics Marketing is that it actually gives you an out of the box event portal. Um, so this event that I'm referring to here, let me actually just show you what that could look like on on an event portal. So, uh, so what I've done here is I've just created a very simple event and I've not added too much detail here, um, but you can see that this is building out the, the portal page for me. Now, I don't know how, you know, the various people on this call, you know, how you would handle something like this, you know, whether you would push this up to your website or whether you would push this up to a portal that you might be managing. Um, but I would imagine there's probably a lot of effort that goes into, um, you know, using various web agencies or, or people with experience of building out, um, you know, websites to, to do that. What's great about using the event portal is that it's all managed in dynamics. So um, now it is a web page. So if you want to completely change the branding of it, um, then then you can do that because it, it is a web page and you can build up templates and so on. But the actual content of the web page is actually held in dynamics. But one of the things that I wanted to show you before I show you where that event is set up in uh, in dynamics. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to show you is let me just duplicate this tab. So we've got another uh, another version of it. And look. I've actually got the ability to change the language. So uh, now it's only going to change the navigation. It's not going to change the content, but you, the, you know, there's a lot of benefit there with that. So if I go back to the English one, if I click on the drop down there, we can see look, there's lots of there's lots of different language options here. And uh, so we've got, you know, we've got various European ones, but we've got uh, Japanese, Korean, obviously Chinese is the one I just picked up there, Thai. So we've got some various languages in here. And then what happens is, is that when the person visiting the portal um, wants to basically change the language, they just use this drop down. Um, that's all out of the box. I don't have to do anything to make that happen. And that's great from from an inclusivity perspective, not just a personalization perspective, but it's great from an inclusivity inclusivity perspective. Now, I appreciate that foreign students do have to um, show a level of proficiency in English, but just to have the ability for them to be able to navigate your uh, event portal, um, you know, using their native language. And of course it does help with friends and family that might be helping them to make a decision around which university they, they should choose. So obviously then you can see all the navigation on this page has changed into Chinese. So I'll just close that one down. Now I did say that all of this event is held in Dynamics. So if I go to my next tab here, um, then what you can actually see in here is that you've got uh, the event right here in um, in Dynamics. So, so you can see over here, I'm still in Dynamics Marketing. I've gone to the events section here. I've opened up my open day event, which is the one that was just on the portal. And all I've had to do is put in the details of the event. Um, so you can see in here, I've got the details of my event. And then what it actually does is that when I then um, set this, um, this event to go live, it will then actually generate the event URL for me. So if I want to, um, you know, use that URL for any reason that I can do. But remember, when we looked at the email earlier, I didn't have to use the URL because the email knows about the event. So all I have to do is link the event to the to the uh, email and Dynamics Marketing takes care of it for me. Also notice you've got your Teams integration here as well, which is obviously great for uh, attract, attracting students as well, because you can set up uh, team sessions around 
um, any events that maybe they're not allowed or they're not able to attend in person. Now, what about some of the personalization stuff that you've got in here? Um, well, not strictly personalization, but um, the kinds of things that I can do from in here is I can change the image for the event here. So the image that you saw on this portal here, um, that's not the standard image, um, but you know, I don't have to engage with any kind of web design agency to do that. All I have to do is add the image in here for me and it will update the image. And obviously that allows me to create add images that are more relevant to the event that I'm trying to promote. And some of the other things that you can do is, um, for example, uh, you can add custom registration fields. So um, by default, when a, when a candidate or when a prospective student goes to register, what they get is a very simple registration form which just has their first name and their last name and their email address on there. And obviously we do have, um, you know, some security checks in terms of typing in the, you know, the capture codes and so on. Um, so that's all standard out of the box. However, what I can do is I can add custom registration fields here. So I can just add a new event custom registration field to here. And then what it will do is it will add that to my uh, form for me, my registration form. So for example, I might want to add, say, some personal interests to the registration form. So when the student is registering for the open day, they can maybe put in some of their their personal interests. Um, and then that can be added into the, re the registration for me that I could then use to personalize the next email that I send them. So I could then send them an email that is then personalized further to incorporate some of their uh, their personal interests to you know improve improve that engagement and that experience for the student. I'll just pause there for a second to see if anybody's got any questions on um, on anything that we've just covered there with regard to events. We don't have anything in the chat at the moment, but yep. okay. So. There's one thing that I wanted to kind of just just sort of bring out here, because what one of the questions that we usually get asked when we're talking to various universities about uh, about marketing solutions is um, why Dynamics 365 marketing? Why why would we why would we want to do Dynamics 365 marketing as opposed to you know any of the other marketing platforms that that might be out there? Um, and yeah, it's it's a it's it's a question that comes up quite frequently. Um, and the answer that we usually give is around um, the ability to be able to get a a complete picture of your engagement with your various customers, whoever they happen to be, whether that's, you know, attracting new students or whether that's trying to bring students into alumni or whatever it might be. It's that all it's that all up picture. Um, um, I can sh demonstrate that to you by by looking here. So so if I look if I look here at the contacts, you can see I'm looking at one of my contacts here. Um, and I've got, you know, summary information here. I've got details and so on. Um, and then I've got events attended here. So I can see that, you know, Abby has registered for uh, our engineering open day. That's the same set of contacts or the same set of contact records, obviously with permissions al allowing us to do that, that other departments within the university may also be engaging with. So, so um, what it allows me to do then is it allows me to be able to leverage that information that's being captured by those other departments. So, so let me give you a scenario. So let's say we've got a situation where we've got a student that is currently studying undergraduate um, engineering and they're looking to do postgraduate courses with us. Um, over the years they've been at the university, the various departments within the university will have gathered um, a lot of information around that student. 
when it comes to marketing pro postgraduate courses to that student, what you can then do is you can leverage all of that information that has been captured over the time that that student has been been with you as an undergraduate to then tailor the messaging, personalize the messaging that you now want to send out um, to them with prospective opportunities to do postgraduate um, with, with the university. No, it's a situation where marketing is no longer siloed. Marketing is no longer sitting in its own systems. It's been brought in to the to the main part of the um, to the main part of the um, the university's um, data capture around around dynamics. So it it makes it a lot more powerful um, and makes the experience for the students a lot better in terms of the personalised content. So. I know some of you might have concerns about, well, what about security? What about making sure that confidential information is not shared across the departments where it shouldn't be? That is all part of the Dynamics platform. So, um, so you know, don't worry about if you've got those sorts of concerns, but it does mean that, you know, um, other departments within uh, the university potentially can see the journey the students been on with regard to how they came to the university, how they were first introduced to the university, but likewise marketing can then utilize information that's been captured by the other departments to be able to personalize that messaging they're sending out to uh, to the students for further opportunities. So I just wanted to kind of put, oh go on, no, that's OK. I was just going to jump in because we've had two questions come in of which what you just said might help answer Carrie's one just mm -hmm. around uh, limiting the access to the contact information. So I yeah. think that sounds like it is covered off. Um, the only other one from Victoria uh, was around uh, when personalising an email, how far from the contact record can you go? Can you use data fields on an event booking? Because at the mm -hmm. moment they can only use fields on the contact record. Yes. So as long as as long as the the records that you're talking about are linked to the contact in some way, and so things like event registrations, for example, would be so because the event registration is how the contact is linked to the event. So as long as it's as long as they're linked in some way and they will be, then yes, so you could use you could it doesn't have to be off the contact record. It can be off any related records that is uh, related to the contact record. Does that answer your question? Yeah, give us a thumbs yeah. up. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the other thing that I I kind of wanted to go on to was because it's it's all sort of related to um to to what we're kind of talking about here is is segments. Um. So segments or, or as we sometimes call the marketing lists, although that tends to be the kind of the, the older name for them now. Um, obviously, when you're sending out um, personalized content, um, then you know the, the first key element is obviously to make sure you've got the right audience. Um, so, um, so obviously segments are quite key. So I just wanted to show you an example um, of a segment and just look at some of the capability um, that we have here. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually create a new um, segment. So within Dynamics Marketing, we have two options. We have the ability to create dynamic segments, um, but we also have this ability to create static segments. And you can see I've already got one segment here and it's a static one. Um, so I'm going to create a dynamic one. So just in case you're not sure of what the difference is, um, dynamic segment is one that's actually based on um, a query of some kind, um, and that's whether that's a um, um, you know a, a segment, a query that's based around um, information that you hold about the student, or whether it's information around how that student is interacting with the university. We can see the difference in a minute. With a static one. Personally, I don't like the name static because to me the word static implies that that's it, it's fixed and you can't ever change it, but that's not strictly true. Um, you can actually update a static segment um, 
you know, over time. I think they would be better if they called it a manual segment rather than a static one, because it has to be manually managed rather than based on a query, but but they've chosen to go for static. So, um, so I'm just going to go into the dynamic segment. And um, the first thing you notice is that it does actually give me some ver um, some samples here. Yeah, I mean, they are very generic. So things like, you know, um, student attending a session on an event, attending an event itself, uh, basic interaction segments. So you've got all of these. So so they've, you know, Microsoft have been very keen, to, uh, very nice to us and, and given us uh, actually quite quite a long list of, um, you know, different options that you might want to start with. However, uh, you don't have to start with them. You can skip that and just go for a blank one. So let me just call this one. Oops, HE Engineering uh, uh, Segment. OK, so what kind of things can you actually put in here? So so you've actually got three different types of uh, block that you can add into your uh, into your segment. So you've got your query block. Um, what I really like about this is that you've actually got some samples, so uh, or su some suggestions. So you can put in things like contacts who, uh, and then oh, that's not very good. Contacts, and then what it will do is it will give me some suggestions. So basically, I can I can click on these suggestions, um, and then. If I just click on this without typing anything in, you can see the full list of suggestions. So you can see it's got the suggestions here for me um, that I can actually click on. And then when I click on those, what it'll actually do is it will fill out the detail below for me. So it's it's using natural language as a way of uh, helping me to to build out the query for my segment. However, if I don't want to use that, I can build it out myself. So. On my contact record, the one I always like to start with is status because we don't really want to be marketing to anybody that's inactive or usually we don't. Um, and then what I can do is I can just keep kind of building up my my segment here so um, so I can add another condition on the contact record. I could add another group, for example, or somebody asked about related entities earlier. So you can see that we've got the ability to add related en entities here as well. So this is where you could then really personalize your uh, your segment by by drilling down into other entities. So, you know, only give me the contacts that have registered for this event. And that means then that the, co you know, the, the messaging that I will be sending out to those contacts can be very, very personalized in that it's it's only relating to these particular group of um, contacts where they've registered for an event. So I can add a, a related entity here as well and a group. Yeah, if you add a group, um, what you can do is obviously you can do ands or ors in here. Um, and uh, so you can you can build this up quite easily. But what I really like about this is that it's all um, click and select. You don't need any knowledge of building out queries. You don't need to be technical at all. The key thing here is just understanding your data. As long as you understand where your data is stored um, and the values that you're interested in, um, it's very, very easy to build, to build up these queries. Now, something that a lot of people forget is this behavior block. So what you can actually do is you can add a behavior block in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in as an and also. So I'm looking for all my active contacts and then what I've got here then is these uh, behavior blocks um, and there's lots of options in here. So so you've got things like, um, you know, where the email has been delivered. Uh, where the email has been forwarded, where it's bounced, and that's just the email ones. Then we get on to forms, We've got event registrations here as well, even down to have they registered, have they checked in, um, and then different options down here as well. Uh, redirected, triggers, website clicks, and all those sorts of things. So uh, survey responses, so it's all in there. And you know what's really great about this is that you can really hone 
your marketing lists or your segments so that that allows you then to be able to build very, very personalized content because obviously the the audience that that email is going to, um, you know, is very tailored to to uh, to those individuals. Um, let me show you the other segment list. Um, because um, I'm going to jump out of this one, I'm going to discard it. So, so that's a dynamic one, very, very easy to build. Um, with the with the um, with the static ones, um, then what you can do here is you can just actually manage this yourself. So, uh, so you can do that by. Um, so you've got some details in here about the list. Um, you can see over here I've got some journeys that is being used in. Um, but then what you can do is you can actually manage this yourself. So uh, by using the edit button at the top here, um, then I can go in and I can actually edit my list and I can add new members to this. So and I can do that by adding them individually. I can add them with a query um, or I can remove them with a query as well. But you know the, the difference is, is that this is very much a manual thing, whereas with the dynamic one, you put in the query and then dynamics marketing will take care of the members for you are there any questions on that there's one question from anna so yeah. it's around um contacting current students uh, mm -hmm. often they don't use or check their emails yeah. how do you hook up for example whatsapp or other other routes of communication yeah so um so what you've got over here is if i switch on the left hand side you can see that i've got outbound uh, marketing here if i switch this to real time marketing oh and it's just going to tell me that i've got a live segment that i need to save so let's just uh, deal with that first of all what's it going to do now there we go is it going to let me switch now there we go. So I've gone into real time marketing. So what I can see in here is that I've got the ability here to do, uh, you know, to do emails, to do push notifications, to do text messages, and then you've got more channels as well. So and then more channels could be, you know, your other channels like your Facebook, your WhatsApp. They would just need to be um, configured so that uh, they work with dynamics marketing. So um, so that's where you could then handle things like that so so if you don't want to send out emails or you want to send out something in addition to emails um then then you've got your you know all your various uh channels here that you can use as as well as emails yeah so so that's all in there for you yeah so yeah those channels are, are all there just just need configuring to be to be used with marketing that's all yeah that's okay. it though, at the moment yeah brilliant okay so the the last thing that i kind of wanted to show you um is customer journeys um because obviously customer journeys is is uh is really really powerful um so uh so what i wanted to do is just show you how easy it is to uh, to build out a customer journey um and again this is another opportunity for you to then be able to uh, to personalize um, you know your um, the way you deal with your marketing communications to your to your your prospective students when you're trying to uh, attract them. So what I'm going to do, I've got one already set up here, but what I'm going to do is recreate it. So I'm just going to go up here just to show you how easy this is because um, I know that some of the some of the marketing solutions that we see out there they they make this side of it quite complex um and expect you to have a certain technical ability to be able to do this um with dynamics marketing again it's very very easy as long as you can use your mouse and you can fill in some boxes uh, then there's no reason why you can't build out some quite powerful marketing journeys um again you get a sample of um of uh, templates that you might want to use, uh, not as many as you do with some of the other options, but they are in there for you to think about. So things like event marketing, customer onboarding, which which is 
potentially you know a form of of attraction and and admissions so that might be useful there for you as well um but again what i'm going to do is i'm going to skip this so uh so you can see what it does is it gives me a canvas um to which i can then start adding uh my my journey to this so uh, so the first thing that you probably want to do is give your journey a name so let's call it h e oops, h e engineering two because i've already got one called engineering so you can see i've just given it a name there um, and now i can start adding uh, my journey to this so uh, so who do i want to start my journey with so i need to basically set my audience so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over here and you can see i've got different types of uh, ways to trigger this journey so so basically i could start with a segment which is my marketing list. I could do an update to contact records. So if a contact record gets updated or whether they've submitted a form. So, um, so I've got basically a, a couple of options there. Now, I know that's not a comprehensive list, but, but bear with me because I'm going to show you something else in a second. So I'm going to go with a segment and then all I need to do is choose my segment. So uh, there's my segment there that I created earlier. So you can see it's added my my segment in here. And now what I need to do is start populating the journey. So so what I can do is just select here and we're going to send them an email. And let's go over here and let's put in our email there. And you can see it shows me the sample of my email from earlier. And you can see that it's um, it's got some details here about the email um, and then what I can do then is I can then keep adding to this so maybe we want to put in an if statement for example so we might want to uh, select come on there we go so we're going to select the email right and then select the condition so again we've got things like as the email been opened as the as a link being clicked so that email that we got those those call to actions in um what i can then do is i could basically then say you know have they clicked a link in the email so that i can then personalize that journey even further because now i could then send them down a different path so so as a link being clicked here for example yeah and then you even got a wait time so so basically what the wait time is going to say is basically we're going to wait three hours but obviously you might want to wait days rather than hours but basically give this give the prospective students some time to basically you know digest the email decide what they want to do click on the link and then personalize that journey further for them because you've got your yes and you know uh, you've got your yes and you know branches there as well so it's really easy to build out these journeys and I as I said I know with some marketing solutions this can be quite complex and quite daunting but with with dynamics marketing they've made it incredibly easy for us to build out these uh, these journeys now that's not the end of the story because as I said when I was creating this journey I said it's actually uh, got quite limited choices in how you start the journey so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip over to oh let me save this before it starts complaining at me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to the real-time marketing because I've got journeys here as well and what I've done is I've created a journey called H HE event registration and basically what this one does is this one has triggers and you define what those triggers are so so actually you you set those triggers up so those those triggers could be um anything you know that ideally you 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 could want it to be so so basically you can see here this journey is going to be triggered with them registering for that open day event yeah um and then in this case i'm just sending out a confirmation email um, but potentially your world is your oyster with this now because what you can basically do is is have all of these different triggers that can then be sending out all this personalized content again just to go back to the point earlier it doesn't have to be an email it could be a text message it could be a whatsapp message so uh, it doesn't have to be an email um, 
or it could be both. It could be that you send them an email and a WhatsApp message. So, uh, so you've got you know that ability to to do that here and your triggers are actually set up here so uh, so you control those you control what those triggers are and there's very very extensive list that you can use as templates for building out your uh, your triggers so i'm conscious of time because i've left us with four minutes and and i know that madeline did promise you a q and a at the end of this so i will stop there and if anybody's got any questions um then feel free to to put them in the chat, or if you want to come off mute and and uh, and ask us directly, that's fine as well. Madeline, shall I hand yeah, back to you? I, yeah, thanks, Martin. I don't think we've got any at the moment. I know we've had some quite good discussions throughout. Um, yeah. So happy to kind of keep the chat open if anyone has any questions. But what I will do. Um, if anything comes back afterwards, so if I just take your screen, Martin. Yeah. Um, so what we do have is in the last couple of minutes, if anyone has any time just to complete the survey. So if you've got any other questions off the back of it and pop them in there, any feedback on how the session has been today or anything else that you'd like to see, it would be really helpful. Um, we do also have our LinkedIn page on, on this QR code here. So it's essentially a platform where we share information like this around what our next higher education hub is, but also other blogs, other areas of interest that we think could, could be useful for you guys. Um, so what I will do, I'll leave them up on the screen now. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat if anyone's got anything else. Um, but if not, just just reach out um, if there's anything else that you want to talk through. I appreciate it. Okay. Don't think we've got anything in the chat. No. So OK. People might Thank you very much for off. the session. Thanks. Martin. You're welcome. Hopefully it was interesting. Oh, there we go. We're getting some, there we go. Yeah, we got, we've got That's a thumbs up as well. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. guys. All right. Brilliant. All right, well, we'll leave it there then. Um, thanks, everybody. Have a lovely day, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye, everyone. Cheers.